Is it about changing the, the world? problem that's right Or is it your you? generation's time? Let's find out. I'm Collins Angwech from Northern Uganda. I'm a college student with Invisible Children's Scholarship Program. Northern Uganda is the small country below Sudan. But right now, I'm traveling around the United States sharing a story of a war that has affected my people of Central and East Africa for 25 years now. 25 years of war. In 1986, before I was born, two years, a man named Joseph Kony started a civil war against the government of Uganda in an attempt to overthrow the government. He never had support from the local people, but this man, Joseph Kony, continued fighting in my country for 20 years. He started abducting children on a daily basis. Thousands of children have been abducted, forcing them to fight against their own family members, against their friends. This was so traumatizing. It was so traumatizing for us in that we had to leave our homes every single night. We fled our homes every single night to go and sleep on the jungle, to go and sleep on the streets or in a bus park, because these are the only places we felt safe in. We never felt safe in our own homes. We never had a family kind of life, because as my father would be leaving to go and sleep in the jungle, I'm leaving to go and sleep on the streets. It was so horrible. It was so horrible in that me and my family had to leave to go and stay in a different village with, with different families, and they couldn't take care of us for so long before we had to move again. Thousands of people left their homes to go and stay on a displacement camp. Life in a displacement camp was the worst kind of life ever. Diseases spread so rapidly. Men turn to alcohol. You can imagine a life where you wake up every single morning and all you're seeing is your father drinking. He can't do anything. Girls turned, got married at very early ages. At the age of 10, a girl is marrying because their parents couldn't take care of them we had to rely on World Food Program. You can imagine if food is not served, you, you have nowhere to get food from because we couldn't grow food in our own country. We became refugees in our own country. It was so horrible. I lived through this and my life was a mess because during that same time, as I was fighting for my life, running every single night to go and sleep on the streets, my father was fighting for his and unfortunately, he lost it. I lost him when I was 12, but I remember before my dad died, he kept telling me all that he wanted for me was a future. Even during the war, it was so risky, but my father fought so hard to send me to school. He knew it was risky, but he told me to stay in school, and I wanted his dream to live through me. I wanted my father's dream to become a reality, and it is paying off right now because I'm in college. I'm a college student, and I'm pursuing a bachelor's in development. I'm pursuing a bachelor's in development and it's because of the, the war and the way women are viewed in my country, you're not going to believe this. I represent less than 1% of women who go to school in northern Uganda today. Isn't that amazing? It is, it is so difficult in my country. There's so much in us that is not seen. So much in children who are affected by this kind of war that is not seen. I remember in 2003, three young Americans came to my country. They did not know anything about the war. They did not know anything about the LRA or Joseph Kony. They were shocked when they reached northern Uganda. Jason, Bobby, and Lauren saw thousands of children leaving their homes at night to go and sleep in the jungle, to go and sleep on the streets. They did not want to believe it, but it was happening. It was real. And they did not know what to do. They were filmmakers by then, and then they decided they needed to do something, and they, they didn't know how to do it. They, they told children like me that they made friends with, that they were going to do something for us. And they, when they started documenting this, when they came back to the, to the States, they showed this to whoever cared to listen to them. They showed this in high schools, colleges, and people had them. Something that started as an adventure to northern Uganda 
turned into this organization that has made me who I am today. Invisible Children is sending thousands of children to school. Invisible Children is, is paying thousands of, of, of people. And this is something that someone can do. It's because these people used their voices, they gave their talent. They gave their time to making a difference because they had promised us they needed to do something and they did it. And they're the reason I'm who I am today. This has not taken, has not only kept them at documenting this and showing this to the, to the public, but it has also taken them to the president's office. They helped push a bill that was passed last year that calls for the capture of Joseph Kony and the apprehension of, of, of his top commanders and also the reconstruction of this war affected areas. That is something that is a great achievement, but the war is not yet over. I remember one time I was talking to my grandfather and he was telling me they never lived our kind of life. They had peace. There was relative peace during that time, and I was asking him, why must I be born on the streets? Why must I live my entire life running away from abduction, staying in the jungle? And he told me all that he was giving me was hope. And as I speak right now, it is paying off because the LRA has left my region. They have left my people, and people are going back to resettle in their homes. But I can't speak the same for the people of Congo. I can't speak the same for the people of Central African Republic. The people of Sudan are going through the same kind of things that I went through. The same kind of abduction, the same kind of killing and displacement that they did to my community is actually going on. The LRA is terrorizing these countries on a daily basis. It scares me so much because just a few days ago, we got an update that the LRA have reunited in Congo and they're attacking the worst way ever. I know it when they reunite. They got just more than 50 people killed in two days, and so many have been abducted. This is the situation in, in these in this places, and the war is not about to end unless people like you, people like us, stand up and speak and talk on the behalf of these people and talk for ourselves, because someone like Invisible Children did it for me. Thousands of people raised their voices for me. That is the reason I'm who I am today. They are the reason thousands of people go to school. We are seeing this happen. The people in Egypt, the people in Libya are using their voices and they know peace is worth fighting for and they're getting it. You need to use your voice today. If you're in a place where there is war, you need to stand up and use your voice. If we are not intentional about the way we do our things, we are going to be taken advantage of. I don't want to be taken ad advantage of. That's why I'm standing. And it's because someone did it for me. That's why I'm here today, moving from high school to high school, college to college, sharing a story of this and helping someone reconstruct their lives. If you're in a place where there is peace and freedom, you voice is so powerful. You can make a difference. You just need to stand up and speak for these people. There's so much power in your voice that you have not yet realized. There's so much in the people that nobody would want to go through this. Nobody would want to go through the same kind of things that I've gone through, the same kind of things that the people of Egypt or, or Sudan are going through, and you need to take that as at a personal level and say, I don't want this to happen to me, and the same way I feel is the same way the people who are going through this feel, and I'm going to fight for them. You can do this, you can make a change. I want to end here by saying, together, we can show the future generation a life beyond conflict. Thank you very much. Thank you for being here.